What's up YouTube and welcome to today's daily vlog. Today's is slightly different. Normally I just vlog about working, running, sorry, I should say, a takeaway in the middle of this corona uh, outbreak and hopefully I will still be able to get some vlogs out once this is all over. But today I am answering some questions that some of you have asked from our, uh, when I asked if you could ask, stop saying ask, you sound like an ass. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Right, so the questions you guys have asked me and Lydia, some of them were directed at me and some of them I could just answer myself because I, I don't think Lydia would have an answer for it so what I'm doing is I'm saving the ones that definitely for me and her for that video and I'm going to answer the ones that are I consider directed at me in this video I don't have that many I've only got one two three four five six. I've got six questions so that's how interested you are in my life guys <laughs> thanks okay so here we go I've got my wine at the ready it is some sort of time so the first question is from Hartley Hare and it reads will you do another book about the pitfalls of recommendations of running a restaurant slash takeaway type business that is a very good question I hadn't thought of it until you pointed it out and yeah I, I would consider it if I thought people would buy it my one recommendation for running a, a restaurant or a takeaway or a food establishment is even don't fucking bother it is really hard work people say work smart not hard that works really well if you work for someone if you're doing it for yourself it's a whole another ball, ball game it's you can work as smart as you want you're still gonna have to put the fucking hours in you've also got to remember that only one in three startup food businesses will last their first year and only one in ten of those will let, make it to their third year that's um it's it's the the hardest industry to make a successful business in and everyone thinks they can do it but they can't they really can't you have to have a number of things about you as a person that to make it work and unfortunately many people go out there thinking it's easy and it's not to answer your question though yes I, I, I would if enough people would buy it I guess I might just write anywhere and just get a few printed that's quite a nice idea I like that yeah I like that so thank you very much Hartley Hair for that Next question. Okay, so Laurie Miner asks, can you explain Anami and layman's terms and can I achieve it in many dishes or just certain kinds? I am a decent cook, however, this Anami boggles my mind. Okay, so let me start by saying Anami is a fifth kind of flavour that they found. So you've got your sweet, which is at the bottom of your tongue, salty, here, sour, here and across the back. Bitter is right at the back of your throat. And Anami actually covers the sensors that pick it up actually cover your entire tongue. Now what is it? What is it? It's, that's a very difficult question to answer. It's basically a savoury flavour. I can't, well it's like, it's like trying to describe a colour to someone who's never seen that colour. I, I can't explain it, but it's it's only achieved through using products with actually anami exists in a lot of naturally occurring things like aged cheese tomatoes mushrooms where people go mad for mushrooms and tomato sauce seaweeds in fact kelp was where the original unami was derived from um, by japanese scientists in 80 i think 1880 something i could be wrong could be later of later on it could be 90s 19 something but anyway that's where it's come from it's japanese derived and to really get the flavor of unami you have to use msg um, it's been proven safe countless times i'm not going to go through that because anyone who wants to argue with me just read my fucking book and realize that you're a fucking idiot but achieving it in in terms of in just things that you have is it's already there a lot of the time, it's just you don't notice it, but you can enhance it by adding that flavour with the MSG. A lot of chefs will say that it's cheating. Um, I will say if you add salt, you add in a flavour enhancer, so shut the fuck up. Secondly, think of it like a race. You won't bring a Ford Fiesta to a race when you've got a Ferrari in the garage, would you? No, you cheat and use a Ferrari because you want the best out of the race, the best out of everything you can have. So. That, that, that whole idea that it's cheating is utterly ludicrous and just that's just someone who's jealous and a lot of Michelin star chefs use it as well. I hope that answered your question because oh fuck I've lost my list. 
I, I don't know any other way to describe it other than if unless by answering it you turn that's not what you meant and then the item term then can say well it's mainly meat dishes though anything meaty it goes quite well with broths anything asian obviously in fact you can use it in any type of cuisine it works really well with roasts again meat based but yeah so i hope i hope that helps next question i don't need these on i'm not, I'm not short-sighted uh, fated, no, fated snow fox. I finally thought of a question. What induction cookware do you recommend? Okay, so they go on. I've got a tea fowl indigo wok, but the contact area is quite small and it doesn't spread the heat well. I'd like to up my rice game. So what do you go for? Also, have you ever considered a food gaming night at the restaurant? Might bring in new customers. Do a cover charge with a buffet and bring your own games could be fun um okay so there's a couple questions there the first one is what induction cookware do i recommend i re always recommend if you got if you if you can and um, this goes against the face of every chef out there probably but non stick is i'm sorry the people go it's, it's dangerous for you you shouldn't use it well the chemical that was dangerous for you was taken out of non stick cookware about seven eight years ago so that no longer exists you were right, seven, eight years ago it was bad for you, but, but there's not a thing now. So here's a bridge, get over it so I can burn it down when you're on it. That's a bit mean, I'm sorry about that. I didn't... Fuck it, I didn't mean it. Cookware, yeah, so any non-stick pan really, in terms of a wok, the woks are always gonna have shallow bases. But we, if I'm cooking on my induction and we're not doing videos, we only use like a wok looking thing in the videos because that's what people want to see. When we're cooking at home, we use like these large saucepans that are about that tall, that wide, and the bases are really wide. The Harry Bikers used to do a version of it, but they stopped doing them now, which is a bit disappointing because they were they were fucking brilliant. Um, they were ceramic as well, so well, ceramic's really good. But you, if you let ceramic burn, so you leave it on and you don't put oil in it, you forget about it, and it gets like this sort of brown tinge. You fucked it. But if you do want to go through the trouble of seasoning uh, wok, get carbon steel wok and season it properly and you have no issues. Also, they sell a lot of carbon steel woks with wide bases. I'd like to up my rice game, so what do you go for? Oh no, that's the same question. Uh, yeah, I'd always go non-stick, tea fowl, but not a wok. <laughs> I don't cook with woks actually. I'm not even at work, I don't cook with woks, they're, they're impractical. Yeah, I'm saying that, they're impractical. They're just good to make you feel like a kitchen ninja, and that's about it. The gaming night question. I have actually thought about that. The only issue is, the town we live in, I think there are only seven or eight people that would even be interested in gaming like that. And out of those people, how many would actually turn up? Probably just me and Scott, and Scott already works for me. So it's not something that I seriously am considering, but I might do if there was enough interest. But um, great minds think alike, so well done. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Thank you for your candor. Oh, that's another sign off I can do next time. I could have done it at the end of this. Never mind. Dave Williams asks, you mentioned that you were working on a second book. What can we expect it to be? That is a good looking question, David. We, well, I am writing a Chinese takeaway versus traditional cookbook. So there are obviously a thousand well, not a thousand, but a couple of variations of every Chinese takeaway menu dish because everyone has a slightly different variation. So what I'll be doing is new variations of the dishes that I've covered in my previous book. And then one side you'll have the ch Chinese takeaway version of a chow mein and then on the other side you have a recipe for a traditional chow mein or the traditional version. So like you have a chow mein here and on this side, the derivation of the chow mein. That is the second book I'm working on. Thank you for your question, David. Uh, Callum Jenkins asks, what are the advantage of what are the advantages of running a restaurant versus to takeaway and vice versa? Right. So the advantages of a restaurant is that you can charge more. That is, you can charge more just because you have the restaurant. Restaurant rates are higher. You pay more rent. Uh, you know, that is the massive advantage of running a restaurant. You also kind of get to build a nice environment for people to sit in, which is, is, is actually quite fun in itself. Okay, so I didn't do that for this, Lydia did it all, but knowing that 
we've done that is really sort of satisfying. Uh, the other advantages of a restaurant is you get to sell alcohol and alcohol markups are quite good. You work on sort of, yeah, 33% again, which is a good markup. So that's quite good. So you've got 66% profit you make on that. That's just how it works. That's why alcohol is so expensive, but people don't realize that you've got to buy glasses and stuff. They break bottles shatter so you can't even sell something and the cost price of things are quite expensive especially with alcohol and you could potentially have it sitting there for a long time and then it will go out of date and then you can't sell it so that those are I suppose the alcohol and the the fact that you can charge more is the pros takeaway the pro of takeaway you don't need anywhere near as much staff so you can throw out just as much food but have half the staff costs which is massive staff costs are mega um, to a small business they they are literally they literally cripple some I know that sounds awful because you've got to pay your staff well but it's 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 true and it's why a lot of small businesses can survive because they can't afford to pay their staff it's, it's unfortunately just the way it is especially in food especially in food because it can be really really labor intensive and you need those extra people the other advantage you don't have to deal with breaking things like glasses uh, you don't have to worry about washing up you don't have to uh, worry about your manner as much uh, obviously what you're always polite you have to be but in a restaurant you're super super polite whereas in a takeaway you're just a takeaway aren't you obviously i hope that my my team don't act any differently from one side to the other because if they did i'd be disappointed in them but it, it's not as rigid and it's not really the way they act it's more uh, dress code is more relaxed as well. They don't have to worry about wearing the right things because it's more of a relaxed environment to be in. Also, at the same time, you you have to charge way less, so it swings around about. Personally, I'll always want a restaurant over a takeaway. There's just more scope for a restaurant than there is a takeaway. That's all it is. Uh, thank you, Callum, for that um, message, that that question, and the final question from Bruce one seven seven. When you're not running your empire and planning world domination, <laughs> is there anything you like to do other than shooting the ornaments? Stay safe and don't forget the potato. Well, don't forget the potato. Though. Not really. I can't really think of anything. I like to sit there and, and make annoying noises to piss Lydia off. Like, this is one of my favourites. Ah! That one's quite good. I also like to make loud noises every now and then to make a jump. Like, that's that's another one of my hobbies. She's looking at me. <coughs> yeah, I'm surprised you haven't killed me yet. I collect trading cards. I like to open trading cards, specifically Dragon Ball cards. I used to be heavily into martial arts, but that's gone by the wayside in the last sort of ten years. Uh, actually, that's all due to starting up businesses and stuff like that. That just takes up all my time. I used to like going to the gym. Again, I'm planning to get back into working out. Instead of being in this fucking mess that you see before you. I really fucking, I do fucking miss working out. I really enjoyed it. But I, I also had a tumour in my hand. It was fucking gross. If I can find a picture, that put me off wanting to work out for a bit. And I just got lazy from that. It was it was, it was a benign tumour in the end. Don't worry, it was alright. Obviously, because I'm talking to you now. It was literally like a golf ball. Ball? Oh, a, go a golf ball in my hand. And I had that and that meant that I couldn't work out properly. So that put me off that. Eating, I like eating. I'm really grasping at straws. Shopping, I like shopping. I like buying things. I don't have to, I'm not a shopaholic. Oh, um, I play guitar. And if I can be bothered sometimes it's piano, but Lydia's better at piano than me. I sing poorly. I also write music badly. Sure, yeah. I am a bit shit. Sure. Drawing, I like drawing as well, I draw. I'm alright at drawing, I'm okay at drawing. I just, I don't know. I think, I, you've made me question my life. <laughs> like, what am I doing here? I've just bought skateboard to get back into skateboarding. That's more of a fitness thing there. And shooting, and targets, not things. I, I, I just don't do it because of taking something's life for the sake of it has never floated my boat. I'm staring at my car. I do that quite a lot. I don't really... I can't think of anything else. Gaming, I'm just getting into. You don't really have much 
much of a life to have hobbies. Yeah, I don't know if you heard that. Lydia said we don't really have much of a life to have hobbies. Um, for the moment, no, we don't. <clears throat> it was starting to get to the point where we could, when everything sort of fell to pieces with all this COVID shit. But, you know, it's just life, isn't it? We'll carry on. We'll keep going. I'll drink more wine. Oh, drinking! I, wouldn't... <laughs> I just realised how excited I was about saying that. Not like... It's not a hobby. I'm not like um, drinking to get blottoed or fucked up. Just, I like a, a good glass of wine and I like trying new wines, like trying new gins, I like trying new whiskies, scotch, scotchy, scotchy, scotch. Again, not it's not a let's, 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 beers, beers, beers thing. It's a... Oh, that one's quite nice. Mm, I like the aroma of that one. Tastes like ass, but I like the smell, kind of thing. But not as pretentious as that sounded. I like vlogging. I vlog as a hobby now. I'm trying to look around at things. And I think that is it. So, I'm pretty uninteresting, really. I like playing nerdy, like, tabletop games. Warhammer 40,000 I play. I can't believe I'm about to admit this, but I play Dungeons & Dragons every now and then. But, in my defence... If Channon Tatum and Vin Diesel play it, then if you call me a giant nerd, you go fight one of them and see what happens. Yeah? Probably, probably you'd kick their ass because they're just actors. But, they're cool dudes. So, I maintain I am fucking awesome, even though I play Dungeons & Dragons every now and then. And um, that is it. Anyway, that's all the questions. Thank you very much, guys, for asking. I quite enjoyed that, actually. That was quite nice to do. I'm looking forward to doing this Q&A with Lydia as well. That would be really nice for us to do. We'll open some of the gins that you guys have sent. Which is like, incredible. I still can't believe you guys have sent three bottles of gin. I've got three bottles of gin that you guys have sent me. That's, in, that's honestly just... I'm blown up. I still can't believe Google shared our channel. Because the only other person they shared that day was Tom Hardy. <laughs> so unless you're Tom Hardy and me and Mum, Google weren't even fucking interested. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, off to have more wine and order a, a kebab. So thanks for watching. Make sure you're staying in, stay safe, live long and fucking prosper. This is the way. Engage. What do they say in Divergent? Do you remember? I don't even remember Divergent, but I know what they said. But it's all just a lot of jumping. And yeah, it was, wasn't it? Oh no, I got it wrong. Did they say Hunger Games? It was. And thank you for your candor. That was divergent. Yeah. That's um, maybe odds the end in your favour. That is Hunger Games then. So. And may the odds be ever in your favour. And may the odds be ever in your favour. I sound exactly like Lydia when I talk then. Bye bye. <laughs>